We're not happy. Update. So, Luke here noticed that this control arm, rear lower control arm, is bent. As you can tell. Then I, I noticed that it's got a mark right over here. Right? Like it was hit or something. So then we took out the other side. This is the driver's side. What do you know? It's got a mark. And it's bent too. And it's bent. And this one, brand new one, is not. It's straight. So you guys know what happened. We're guessing? Auction. Auction forklift. Yeah. So thanks, forklift guy, driver, and tow guy, driver. Yeah, for a f messed up diff and a rear suspension. Now we will have to. Uh... Well, we're gonna have to. You know, we're gonna we're gonna do the right thing and uh, bend these straight. We're not spending thirty. 40, $41, dollars, $41, $41, man, on brand new, cheapest doorman lower control arms. No way. The genuine are one hundred and twenty, one fifty, one twenty, one thirty, whatever. Something like that. So it's gonna be press time soon. So that came out. Heat, heat, heat. All right, so the plan here is to save this bushing at all costs. So I got a, a 16 socket. Uh, I cut out the, the bad part, so the actual bolt, or whatever's left of it, is about here. So the plan is to leave that smooth, you know, damage this part just to get it going push it this way so that lower part that smooth part of the bolt is still good so it can still come out as you know as soon as I loosen this up I'm gonna leave it alone and then uh, continue the you know go press it from the flip this and keep pressing it on the good part so here we go fingers crossed still fingers crossed The bolt is bending. Yeah. One more. No. The bend? Yeah, the top part. It's, it's I'm basically squashing it. Maybe uh, cut it flush and drill it out. Oh man, that's gonna be a lot of drilling. Yeah, and I just smashed the um, the inside of the bushing. Yeah, I think this is it's gonna have to get heat up. I'm gonna need a new bushing, most likely. All right, plan B. Whatever it may be. All right, plan B of a different issue. Uh, we're gonna instead of buying new ones, I'm gonna try and this is supposed to be straight. So yeah, forklift guy, thanks again. Good job. Good job, guy. So I'm gonna crop it up here and here and try and bending it straight. I mean, this is, we could probably leave it and just adjust the alignment on the, uh, no, on the toe and camber. It is possible that we would still end up with a good alignment, but we would not be able to sleep at night. Is that some reference to me? Maybe. Here we go. Oh, oh, look. Feather miner came. No, it's bending over here. Actually, no, it came back to its uh, forklift guy original yeah, shape. Yeah, it, it, it will, but. Where is it? Where is it? Yep, you gotta, you gotta go here. Trial and error, guys. Trial, trial and error. Okay. So we've got to go over a little bit. This yeah. is going to okay. bend. Okay. Yeah. No. A little more. 
Uh, I don't know, we have to be able to straight edge? S seriously, man. Straight edge? This guy, man. A little more. Now use your two straight edges, your eyeballs. Good or good enough? A little bit more. Right. And then you, have to, you have to bend it back this way, too. This is bony. Okay, assume the position. Good. Looks good from here. Now here. You, you like it? Oh. Yeah. All right. Like Next. You know what? What do you guys think? Where, where's the, Where's the other one? There you go. This should be same length. Check eye to eye. This one's still warm. Yeah. Just. Sl yep. Slide it over and see. It's good. Oh yeah. So me hammering. Uh. <laughs> Finally, he admitted. All right. You know, I didn't see this because it was in a socket, but anyways, this bushing came out and I thought that these bushings, they have another metal rounded body, kind of, I guess, where you, you know, press them in and out, but no, this is not the case, it's just rubber on the outside, so I can just push it back. But since we have this setup, I'm gonna bring it back to factory. Alright, so if you look closely towards the left, it's not ideal. Well, to me, you know, that's that's good enough. But to Lucas, that may be different. What, what's wrong? No, it's fine, nothing, nothing. Decided not to waste any more gas. Heating it up is just gonna destroy the bushing. So, decided to just press it out. These, these, this came out re very, very easily. Just put a, a socket, a, the same socket, 16 deep. Actually held this in place with my hand on one end in the press and just worked it out very easy. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, I don't think this is not coming out without destroying the bushing. We got parts. We got, no, no, that's the old bearing. We got a new bearing for the rear housing. It's gonna go on this shaft that Lucas is about to clean. We have new bolts. Remember, we're only gonna install one. One we're gonna keep because that one miraculously came out and we're gonna treat it with anti-freeze, anti anti-seize. Anti All right, we got bushings from Napa. This is the part number. Hopefully they'll fit. These guys here, we got two. So they're, you know, they're both uh, same on both sides I mean if I was if I was buying it now we just get one but uh, you know we're dealing with look over here so these two are gonna get Ow. so these two are gonna get uh, you know what I would still leave it man no, no, no. okay I lose yeah so we're gonna replace both or yeah you know what I mean and we have a clutch clutch kit by look Nice. You got a company that I don't know about? Yeah. Alright, I guess Luke is making clutch kits. And we got, we got a throwout bearing here with the sleeve. I'm going to show you later. Once we get to it, we'll show you how to do it. Very simple. We got a new uh, pressure plate. And somewhere under there is the clutch. Once we get to it, we're going to compare the two clutch plates and uh, we'll tell you why we're replacing it. We're really replacing it because of the pressure uh, plate, but uh, you know, we still needed a throat bearing, the sleeve and all that. Might as well get the whole kit. Would it make sense just to get individual parts? So that's why we're going with a new clutch. The old clutch would still, I would say maybe it's, I think I said 50%, but now when I look at the, at the new one, my guess it's probably at 70 maybe even 80 percent 
We're gonna keep it and uh, keep the old one. So, yeah, so about that later. So we pretty much have it all. We even have the fender liner. Check it out. Brand new fender liner from Rock Auto. And we got tires. Uh, later on these, I forgot the name. 185 by 55? Six. 185 by 60. We're gonna talk about that later too. So we got tires, fender liner, rear diff is ready to go, clutch kit. We got. Uh, we're gonna install an STI uh, shifter, maybe if it'll fit. We got the bearing, we got the bushings, and we got the bolts. Here, look, one of us forgot to. Yeah, you clean the gasket off. This here is the part number for that bearing, in case you're wondering. Which came from Subaru. You know, uh, one of these episodes we're gonna sit down and give you guys a list of all the parts what we got used new whatever uh, different sources and uh, how much they cost almost forgot we also bought from AutoZone new CV axles these CV axles are for an 0203 WRX and this these are the same on both sides well not this obviously but remember we could not remove these exo stubs from that 98 uh, legacy trans manual transmission and these actually take those stubs so that's why so we got the best of two worlds over here from an 0203 wrx so you know because of the differential no no excuse me because of the tow truck guy we're having uh, we're having issues. We're, you know, we gotta spend more money. Okay, guys. So this was very easy. This bearing here, drop it in first. Knock it in lightly. Kind of just dropped in with this tool. Literally, it just dropped in. Didn't even need this. Now we need to install that snap ring. Here, Luke is gonna do that. All right, I'm just gonna set this down, and Luke is gonna show you how to do this. Okay, now we will have to press in the blue shaft. Hopefully it will pop in. No, it's not that easy. We have to go to the press and press it in. 30 millimeter or 32 socket is resting on the inside race of the bearing, uh, but it's big enough to uh, fit the shaft, the lower part of the shaft in. So that lower part of the shaft is gonna uh, come in. Keep it going. And we're pressing on the top part of the shaft. This doesn't have to be perfect, Mr. Mr. Perfectionist. I think that's it. You sure? Yeah. Let me see. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can snap in the C clip. I think so. Okay. Yeah, there's a little ridge for another smaller clip that's got to get snapped in. And that's it. Much less noisy, huh? Yeah. Even without oil. Yeah, uh, fun fact those bearings have the same more or less uh, kind of play I'm talking about the old one the used one and the new one so if you go on this guy sideways and we uh, we compare the, the the both bearings same kind of same amount of play on both bearings but remember this one was noisy it's not noisy now so I don't know who knows but we don't know how many miles this one has a lot Okay, so I guess it was an ID8 after all. But yeah, check this out. This is not making any noise whatsoever and it's without oil. Remember, it's still dry. Press it. Alright, just knock it in now with the tool. Yeah? There we go. There you go. 
Nice. Maybe it's called snap ring. Snap ring, yeah, there we go. C clip snap ring. So we kind of forgot to hit record, but very easy diff. First, there are two splines on the other side of the diff that turn uh, individually. So you kind of have to play with it, play with the diff. Do your best, pop it in. You gotta line up those two splines. Uh, once it gets in, don't push it in all the way. Then install this shaft. There's the bearing. Only that bearing needs to uh, pop in. Push that in all the way. And then push in the rest of the diff. So now we're gonna make sure these both surfaces are clean because we're gonna use uh, gasket and RTV on both sides. Very light film, like before. This is the guy here. So the, the RTV is gonna end up on this surface and this surface. We're gonna slap on the gasket on this guy. So it's gonna stick and then uh, Again, we're going to fight with both of these splines. One of them turns individually, and then uh, I think it's the spider gears inside and the actual uh, diff splines on the outside. Pop it in, and that's it. Torque it down. What's the torque on these? These are 12 nodes, right? Is it 18? So. Yeah, if they're 12, then it's 18. If they're uh, 14s, then it's 29. So yeah, these are, these are 14 maybe 29 So while we wait, we gotta wait, you know, one hour for the RTV to dry up. 30 on these, and then uh, the 12s, 18. So 30, well, 29, close enough. And then, uh, no, it's 29.7. So okay, so 29.7, which is 30, and then this one is going to be 18. Meanwhile, I'm gonna show you the clutch plate, how it looks. 54,000 miles on this on this uh, clutch. You can see it's still in decent uh, shape, but these springs well I mean still get away you know you could still install this this is what uh, the one we got what it looks like so I would say guessing about 70 to 80 percent of life left on the old one but mainly this was the issue this is actually whoever was driving this car knew how to drive a stick shift this surface is not burnt no cracks nothing no discoloring same thing on the flywheel but this was the issue tiny bit and if you look at the uh, new pressure plate these springs they're much higher so as we were driving it and we would do aggressive shifts the car wasn't uh, jerking like forward when you were you know, changing that gear it was the rpms would go boom then they would come down you know so that's the main reason why we're doing the clutch okay so now we're going to install the clutch we gotta wait another 40 minutes or so for those uh, to torque those bolts now are we gonna do a loctite on the bolts for the clutch plate that i mean the pressure plate i don't think you need to you just need to do they have lock washers Huh? Do they have lock washers? A lot of people will tell you. We have to reuse the old one, right? Yes, we have. We do have to reuse the old bolts that go here. So a lot of people will tell you, you know, you got, you got a, the flywheel. That's different. Always do Loctite on the flywheel bolts, the inside ones. But then uh, some guys will tell you also use Loctite on the pressure plate, 
And some people will tell you, you don't need to. Uh, you, you probably don't have to if they do have uh, lock washers. And yes, they do have lock washers, as you can see. So, I don't know. We, can, we could maybe just do bl blue Loctite. All right, so I think this is a two-part flywheel or two-piece flywheel. I don't know, maybe. Clutch first, with the fat part of the clutch plate out. Hopefully this will stay. If you don't have this tool, just eyeball this. Come on. All right, I'm in an awkward position because I'm stretching my hands, my arms all the way. I wish I could sit up over here, but. All right, so I'm gonna do a, a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on each bolt. Okay, so you've noticed I was going in circles. Reason for this is you want to avoid tightening up one bolt all the way and then go to the next. If this this doesn't work going uh, across when you're still, you know, tightening it down, not torquing it. Torquing it, just go across. But uh, to get it uh, tight or finger tight, whatever, before torquing, you want to go in circles. Jesus! What? Alright, Luke is breaking something. Because uh, the plate may flex and, uh, and bend on you. So you want to stop. Once you get some resistance, stop, go to the next one. Go, you know, tighten it up. Uh, stop, don't force it. Stop, next one, next one. And just keep going until you'll know when it's tight. Now I'm going to torque it down to what again? What was the torque? 12? What? That? Yeah. All right, torque is 12 foot pounds. Before you uh, get it, get these going. 12, 12 yeah. Uh, make sure this is in the center because the the plate will drop a bit once you put this on and you get one in or two in. Then uh, just kind of kind of jiggle it. Uh, center the clutch plate. So the installation of the transmission is going to be much easier.